Hello everybody, and welcome to Sam and Max, Episode 4. I am John Mookie Ward JM, and let us continue. We just wrapped Episode 3 about a minute ago. Start Episode 4. Abe Lincoln must die. into that exorcism was an uncharacteristic stroke of genius. Demonic possession is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> what? Oh, Commissioner. No, that was, uh, Max's aunt. Yes, 14 packs a day. What's that? Yes. Yes? No. Yes? Sweet suffering Saint Sebastian on the sousaphone in a short story by Susan Sontag. We're on our way. Let me guess. Our friendly neighborhood demon just burnt down another monastery. No, Max, we have a far more bloodthirsty adversary this time. The President of the United States of America. Who? The man's gone nuts. He's enacting all kinds of crazy... Wow! Things. What else is new? This... Federally mandated... <laughs> this aged pretty well. ...and after all major sporting events. So? He's curtailing civil liberties, threatening the environment. <laughs> hey, that makes three of us. And he's about to introduce mandatory gun registration. Okay, never mind. Get the keys. So yes, welcome to Santa Max episode four. I believe next week we'll finish season one off, and we're gonna just jump right into season two and three. And uh, when season when we're doing season three, I'll introduce the poll for what replaces this. A Blinken must die. But why a Blinken? Like Billy and Mandy already tried that, and that was just weird. I guess so is this. I have to point out, Sam, that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you just let me drive. And I have to point out that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you hadn't jumped on my head shouting Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil and firing your gun out the window. I swear that woman was a dead ringer for him. Well, here we are, standing in an open field west of the White House. Let's go bring the hammer down on that so-called commander-in-chief. <laughs> I love that it has like a foyer like a hotel. Step aside, buddy. Freelance police. Just a moment, sir. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Possible situation with the front door. Talking dog and der, rabbit trying to gain access to the OO. Please advise over. Super Bowl? Yeah, that's a negative on the access permission, sir. I'll have to ask you and your little friend to step away from the White House. Doggy Daddy, this is Loose Cannon. Request permission to pants this goon. Over. Before we try physical violence, Max, let's try dazzling the man with our razor-sharp wit and labyrinthine logical conundrums. Ah, emotional violence. Good plan. Did you call yourself Superball? Code name, sir. I'm a bouncer. Secret Service humor. And who's Papa Bear? Section Chief. Runs the operation. Protects the President. Oh! Super Bowl! I get it! I want to talk to your manager. No can do, sir. He's with the President. Don't you get bored guarding this door? It's a rewarding job, sir. Doing my part. Keeping the President safe. Hey, Super Bowl! I'd like you to smell these two handkerchiefs and tell me which one smells more like chloroform. Not now, <laughs> Max. Is that all you do? Guard this door? That's my primary assignment, sir. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Try to guess it while I drop increasingly heavy weights near your head. What's your secondary assignment? Varies. Receptionist, maintenance, light grounds work, public relations. Public relations? I'm a people person, sir. They have you guys doing odd jobs, too? Cutback, sir. Employee Reduction and Consolidation Act of 2003. These sunglasses aren't cheap. Hey, Super Bowl! What gauge syringe would be best for injecting you with a knockout serum? 
Just a hypothetical. You really have time to do everything else and guard this door? I make the time, sir. It's what I do. Let us in, pal. We're freelance police, here to save the president. I thought we were here to stop the president by any means necessary. I was going to wait to mention that part, Max. Either way, sir, you can't get inside. Orders. I've had enough of this. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Perp's exiting zone four now. Seem disgruntled. Stay on the lookout. Over. Now can we push him down and beat that him man with very small hands. bags until he runs crying into the reflecting pool? Tempting, Max, but these Secret Service guys hold a grudge. Valet parking, two dollars. Suspect yourself. That's so Madonna. Hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid 555 phones. Yes, actually. 555-1984. Hey, Sam, did I ever mention how I've memorized pi to 1,000 decimal places? It's 3.14159265358979. you have a piece of paper handy? You want to write down the phone number? I remember the number. I want to write myself a reminder to smother you with a pillow in your sleep. on the lawn. Jimmy? Oh, great. What are you guys doing here? Oh, just saving the world. What are you doing here? I happen to take my vacation at the White House, and I need a little R&R. &R. Speaking of which, beat it. Whee! The White House pool. Most secure waiting pool on Earth. Boxing glove. It's always in the last place you look. Any golf balls? Nope. Assaulting armed secret service agents is one of the leading causes of getting yourself killed. Small mailbox here. Uh, it's one of those ornamental mailboxes that doesn't actually open. That's government efficiency for you. <laughs> hmm. White paint, Christmas lights, and a small barbecue. Everything somebody would need to renovate, decorate, and then accidentally burn the place to the ground. Later, Max, later. An ornamental mailbox. Where are we going, Sam? Remember how the receptionist is one of the guards' we secondary duties? Nowhere, but at least we're making yeah. time. What else do you do besides guard this door? Varies. Receptionist, maintenance, light grounds work. I've had enough of this. Whee! As an answer, the phone. Oh, okay. Hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid five five five. Yeah. Punch the phone. There are so many other things to punch. There are so many other things to punch. Nah. I can't listen to that. Think, boy! Hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid... Oh, five, the five, opening cutscene, right. Yes, actually. Five, five. Okay. Guess we'll just go back to the, uh, the office, then. 
Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. I'll drive! Not while I'm alive. Exactly! Calling Sam. The White House. White House, Agent Superball speaking. Hello, please hold. Roger that. <laughs> Our phone bill is sure going to be expensive this month. It's okay, Max. I've been paying them out of your retirement fund. Hello, is anyone there? That's silly. Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh boy! Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. Hello. Oh my god, I can't believe that actually worked. Now, a lot of these same folks will say that we're wrong for introducing this federal pudding embargo. They envy our freedom. I ask you, what have they got to hide? Unless they're secretly sitting on stockpiles of pudding. That is not a Lincoln. Yes, we will find them. They've got nothing to be afraid of. So, in conclusion, America, get your back up off the wall. Dance, come on, marzipan and good night. It's worse than we thought, Max. He's crazier than a cat. Oh, I shit. think he makes a lot of good points. Those puddings are trying to steal our jobs. And I especially like how he does that spinny thing with his eyes. Again. This is aged very well. Whiskey so feared of Ulysses S. Grant. That's it. The president's not crazy. He's been hypnotized. We've got to snap him out of it, Max. And pronto. How do we do that again? We hit him over the head, like we do with all hypnotized people. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mac, do you work here? What tipped you off? We're freelance police, buddy. This is a national emergency. And we don't appreciate your sassy mouth. Auditions for new White House pet down the hall. This can only end in violence. Hmm, this guy's voice sounds familiar. Do you recognize him, Max? Half the time, I don't even recognize you, Sam. I'm over here, little buddy. Who said that? Do I know you from somewhere? Yeah. I'm that voice in the back of your head that tells you to mind your own business. The veiled threats, the surly tone. I've got it. You're that pit boss from the Toy Mafia. I smell a conspiracy. You smell a nosy dog who's going to get smacked if he don't stop asking questions. What's the Toy Mafia got to do with the Secret Service? What Toy Mafia? Oh, he's good, Sam. The Orso Nostra, the sacred organization you inducted me and Max into in a time-honored ceremony. The one that we infiltrated, repeatedly duped, and then blew up in a fiery explosion of death and property damage. I was going to casually forget to mention that part, Max. That's a very entertaining story, Chowderheads. Now, run along and play whilst I protect the leader of our country. I think somebody may have hypnotized the president while you weren't looking. You, perhaps. Very funny. What do you do around here? I give out free t-shirts to the visitor who asked the dumbest question of the day. Please accept my apologies, but we're all out of Husky Boys sizes. Woo! Double burn! I thought you were on my side. Well, damn, that was pretty good. I just call him like I see him, Sam. You're the president's personal bodyguard? You catch on quick. We need to have a private meeting with the president. National security. Go right ahead. I meant private, as in wait outside and we'll call you when we need you. 
and national security, as in, we need to clobber the president on the head to break his hypnotic trance. Your gift for subterfuge is uncanny, Max. And that's uncanny as in, you two try anything and I'll plug you. You're always with the president? Even when he's got a, you know... Always. I never leave his side. Your codependency sickens me. And it sickens me in exactly the same way, doesn't it, Max? I mean, Sam. What's behind that door? It's a private club for people who aren't annoying me. You two ain't invited. Should we pummel him together, Sam, or would you rather take turns? We can create a national security incident after we've saved the president, Max. We'll be back. I cannot wait. So I gotta hit the president over the head with a boxing glove. How? Hey now, that's my super special top secret rib. Don't touch it. Good day, Mr. President. We come in peace, as far as you know. Oh, finally! The interpreters! Where have you been? Interpreters? Yeah! That is why you fellas are here, right? Sure, why not? Cause I got a meeting with one of them foreign dignitaries. Always talking that crazy space language. Who are you meeting with today? Heck if I know. They show up and start jabbering away about treaties and whatnot. I just let the interpreters figure it out. I just keep an eye on them to make sure they don't steal something or try to eat the cat. We're ready to start interpreting. That's aces, fellas, but the dignitary hasn't shown up yet. Show yourselves around the office. But don't touch nothing. Snap out of it, Mr. President. You've been hypnotized. Shaw, sure, I haven't been hypnotized. That's crazy talk. You've got to listen to us, sir, or we'll be forced to... He looks to a lot like Slappy action. from Goosebumps. Don't talk to me about drastic action. You ever been pinned down in a drugstore parking lot by a pack of muskrat commandos with nothing left to lose? Ever had to gnaw your best buddy's leg off just so you could get his socks and put them on your own ears to fend off the enemy's deadly sonic regurgitate array? Now that's crazy talk. I'm impressed. Wake up, Mr. President. You've never given up on anything in your life. Don't start now. That's awful nice of you fellas, but I haven't been hypnotized. Now do we commence with the head trauma, Sam? What was that? We'll have to get the president alone, Max. Freelance police, you're under arrest. Freelance police? Now there's the kind of can-do vigilante attitude that makes America strong. Finally, someone who appreciates our greater calling. Keep up the good work, Mr. President. You've got to know when to hold him. Know when to hold him. The man's a genius, Sam. I almost feel bad for doing this. It's for the good of the country, Max. Hands off the camera! It's a stack of pithy campaign slogans. Oh, don't fool with those! Wouldn't want to be caught on national TV with my drawers down again. I'm pretty sure that one says that I did not have sex with that woman. Looks like there are rats in the Oval Office. Sam, you've finally done it. A straight line so easy, even I won't touch it. This is either an early draft of the Declaration of Independence or a crude map of Lithuania. Roosevelt's boxing gloves, encased in lucite. TR or FDR? ER, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure who this is, but he must be important. Notice the big door? I don't know, the war room door? No one enters the war room. That's it. You two are coming with me. And stay out. Hello. Now I have to get back to the present. He's not supposed to be alone. Excuse me. Oh no. Welcome, Governor Wizard. The president has been waiting for What? Governor Wizard? 
Hey, who better to run a state than a washed up, urination loving former child star? No one! Hello, this is the White House. Hello. Hello. Is anyone there? No, sir! I said soda abuse! It's a very important issue! Was I? No, comprende, son! But I'm speaking English! Ah, oh, are, are you two fellas the interpreters? It's about time. Darndest thing, we just had a couple imposters in here. Dead ringers for you two. Were they walking around examining everything and engaging everyone in pointless conversations? Those are the ones. Those accursed clones. When will their devilish mimicry end? Help me out with this here potentate, would you? Can't understand a dang word. But that doesn't make sense. I don't even have an accent. Oh no, momento, por favor. Impatient little guy, ain't he? What's new, Wizard? That's Governor Wizard. Thank you very much. What are you the governor of? The 51st and greatest state, West Dakota. Don't you guys read the papers? Just the funnies. You mean the obituaries, Max. Potato, potato. <laughs> We're a young state, but with our own rich traditions that make us a distinct tourist destination, apart from the north and south. How did you get into politics? I won the election. It was a very close race, but I totally won the popular vote. Was it a runoff election? You see what I did there? Runoff? Cause he's wizard? You're still the master of fourth grade gutter humor, Max. What were your qualifications for office? I'm a television celebrity. Now there's a platform I can My get My fucking god. What brings you to the Oval Office? I'm trying to build up nationwide support for the MRSAPP. Who's Mr. Sap? And why didn't you want me to know you were talking about him? I can spell, you know. It's the Mount Rushmore Soda Abuse Prevention Program. It's totally changed my life. I've been carbonation free for over four weeks now. Tell us about the MRSAPP. Be brief. I started the Mount Rushmore Soda Abuse Prevention Program after I became governor to help people get flat like me. But if we can't get federal funding, people all over the Dakotas are going to get right back on the pop. I don't work eight hours a day, six days a week just to throw my money away for some washed up soda junkies with no sense of self-control. You don't have any money, Max. Oh, right. Never mind. Good luck with that, Wiz. So you really kicked the soda habit, huh? And how? Back when I was on the pop, I was in a real downward spiral. That endless cycle of always looking for my next fizz, then having to take time out for number one. Then I saw that documentary about peanut Frank. That's actually why I quit Mountain Dew. Me. I didn't want to be one. I got it, it gave me a uh, beer belly for Scott. it. Peanut Franklin, which is shrunk in, uh, over time, but not gone away. Hollywood motel room, dead of Two, shock? going to the bathroom you constantly ain't, you ain't fun. Got no jelly. Still too soon, Max. Are you sure you wouldn't like a nice cold soda? Gee, thanks. I'll take a. Whoa, no! Stay strong, wizard. You control the bubbles. The bubbles don't control you. Stop talking about soda, will ya? Stop talking about the crisp, clean taste or the effervescent fizz as it pours over ice into a frosty glass. All of it. I've been completely flat for over a month now. I can't go back to the way I used to be. I just can't. I drink soda socially or from at a restaurant, but I will never have it in the house. And I have quit Mountain Dew completely. We're ready to interpret for you. Don't tell me the president needs the interpreter. What did he say, Sam? I'm speaking English. I don't even have an accent. But you hey, talk like the squeaky voice teen. See you around, wizard. I'm 40 and my voice still hasn't cracked. Hello, Mr. President. We're ready to interpret for you. All right, let's get this party started. 
Mr. President, my fellow Americans, I come to warn you about a serious epidemic facing our country, the scourge of soda abuse. Many former pop heads like myself found ourselves in the endless cycle of addiction and elimination until we believed there was no hope. I don't know what you're saying, son, but you're selling it, boy. Good job. I ask you, how long can this epidemic continue? What was that? He said. Prepare to die, capitalist oppressor. What's a guy got to do to get a drink around here? Uh... What's a guy got to do to get a drink around here? Aha, uh -huh. I know what you need. An ice cold orange sugar fizz. I swear by it. No, that's not what I want at all. I must resist. But I am thirsty. And just one couldn't hurt. Frosty cold and so delicious. All the progress I've made. They were about to give me my five week pin. I almost feel bad about this. I don't have a conscience, Sam. What's your excuse? I think I was supposed to do that. I'm not sure. Oh, blessed angels of carbonation. Fill me with your syrupy nectar. Mm. Yeah, now I'm not so much guilty as repulsed. Keep it coming. More. I need more. I need... I need a bathroom. Which way is the bathroom? Which way is Lincoln's bedroom? Oh, you do not want to go there, son. The place smells like a mausoleum in winter. But if you really want to see it, it's down the hall to your right. Sam, did you just make an innocent person defile one of the most famous rooms in U.S. history? Apparently, I did. <clears throat> Once again, Mr. President, the impact of soda abuse on our nation's health cannot be overstated. I ask again, how long can this... Oh, I think they wanted continue? me to go to take him to the war job, room. Great job, great job. What do you say? He said... I need another soda. No problem. I've got plenty of soda. Yes, more! Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. I've already forgotten where the bathroom is. Which way is the bathroom? Which way is the war room? It's that door right over there. But I don't. Oh, thank you. Where do you think you're going? I've got to get in there. Bad. We've got a priority red number two here in the Oval Office. No, it's just number one. Escorting the suspect to holding cell for interrogation. Come with me, sir. But it'll only take a second. Please, let's You're gonna pee on your shoulder. That was fun. Okay, now I didn't catch all that. What did he say? Hello, Mr. President. We'll be back, sir. Now to get in the war room. I think the war room door is only openable in time of war. Stupid old piece. Hi, I'm George Washington. Anyone need their nuts cracked? <laughs> Please don't make fun of George Washington. All right, time to go punch the president. Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly. Look it, fellas. My fingertips look like little tadpoles. Uh. <laughs> they just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned. I was right guy. to call him ah, Slappy. The drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. Our first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But silly me, I thought hypnotize E, not hypnotize her. What? Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV watching public. But who was controlling him? I'm gonna take days to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? 
He was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! Still, ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. Didn't expect to have to replace the president so soon. Now that these idiots have forced my hand... Uh, we're standing right here. We can hear everything you're saying! It's time for a leader the people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and Degambe, we're moving the timeline forward. Commence phase two of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate. You have got to be kidding me. the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the President. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? Scuba diving Buddha on a banana boat with cocktail onions and a map to the stars' homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. Well, one of them. I always thought Taft was shorter. Not Taft, you deficient. My fellow Americans, I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I'll get it! What's that? Uh-huh. Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins the emergency election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free world. I hate when they do that. That's why one of us is going to have to run against Again, him. this is a... Well, quite well. Okay, fair's fair. Max, we're going to make you the next president of the United States. I'd be more comfortable with Max, honestly. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Huh. Hmm, it's see. usually the other way around. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware... This I'm is irregular, but I am a giant mecha uh, statue of a well, dead I president. Assumed I'd be running on the post. Oh no, you didn't! You ain't all that! I freed the slave. I was star of a popular television sitcom. I'm on the penny. I was on TV. Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate reasoned debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. And it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. President. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the random violence and destruction. I was going to say, there's no there's fucking way Max is a Democrat. Creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are. Oh, I ready, thought so Sam would be VP. Listen. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. This the is the most political I'm ever going to get on these streams. The I promise you. Facing our country today, I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln is once again using his trusted campaign slogan, which is pleasing the crowd, but having no effect on his poll rate. <laughs> Where do you stand on religion and schools? 
I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Lincoln pulls out his trusted catchphrase for this election, which delights the crowd, but seems to have no effect on the polls. How would you describe your tax plan? I'm glad. All right, we get our Marco Rubio on our hands. One more life to give for my country. And Lincoln dodges the question by pulling out his trusty campaign slogan, which pleases the crowd but has no effect on the polls. That's enough for now. Keep them coming. I'm ready for anything. Mr. Lincoln, perhaps you'd like to speak about the importance of family values. Of course. A strong family unit is the rock upon which our society is built. It's easy today in this age of your blinged out horseless carriages and racy daguerreotype magazines to believe that honesty and fidelity are outdated concepts. But I stand proud. I have been completely faithful to my lovely wife, Mary Todd, for over seven score years. I've never even looked at another woman. Mr. Lincoln, the networks are looking for a soundbite. Would you care to share a few words with us? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. Oh my God! I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the. But people. I am much taller than them. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I said basically the same thing. Max, you didn't say shit yet. Greetings, miserable proles. This election reminds me of a droll story. It seems Chester A. Arthur and the Pope were kayaking down the Amazon one day. Suddenly, a tiny kandiru fish swims up the Pope's and lodges itself in his <laughs> Arthur grabs the Pope's and <laughs> swelled up like a melon. And the Pope says, thanks. Last time that happened, McKinley wanted a <laughs> No, wait, wait, wait. I think I told it wrong. I'm a uniter, not a divider. I foresee an America under one rule. An iron-fisted rule. One rabbit, one law. Let your neighbors know that dissent will not be tolerated. All hail, Max. I believe in the ideal of a global community, where America is but a small part. We must set aside our differences and work with our fellow nations, all united towards one goal. The complete and utter annihilation of the godless Belgians. <laughs> Jesus Christ. People of Earth, your day of reckoning is at hand. I have a dream, America. It starts out where I'm in an all nude production of Death of a Salesman on Ice, but I haven't studied and I can't remember my lines. Suddenly, it begins to rain marshmallows, but that's okay because trees are made of graham crackers and chocolate bars are the official currency. I believe that by working together, we can make that dream a reality. I want to see a return to the prosperity of the America we once knew. A chicken in every pot and vice versa. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And the chupacabra, Madre de Dios, he'll kill us all! <laughs> if elected, I promise a return to a happier time in America's past. The days when giant thunder lizards marched over the fern-covered marshes of the Midwest, preying on the upstart mammals. I'm a uniter, not a divider. I foresee an America under one rule that all Time out. Max has to uh, visit the little candidate's room. 
I'm drunk with power, but it just goes right through me. <laughs> Who do you like in the election? My money's on Lake. Lake it's on my money. Clever. Hi, America. It's me, Max. Remember, a vote for me is a vote for prosperity, alacrity, and the tyranny of my furry white iron fist. Thank you. severed head of the president. I yearn to hold it aloft and turn giant sea atrocities to stone. You're thinking of Medusa's head. Oh yeah, I always get those two heads confused. I had a feeling that wasn't going to work. Kill me once, shame on you. Kill me twice. Explore the street in the White House? Okay. Man, I'm surprised the Secret Eight Service agent hasn't tackled me yet. Sir. Well, stand aside, pal. No can do, sir. Orders. Are you really happy with this line of work? Finest job in the world, sir. Don't you ever just want to take off for some personal time? Would love to, sir. Got a wife at home. Intel suggests Super Bowl Jr. is starting first grade. Summer home with plenty of doors I could guard in my time off. Solid oak. Good doors. Strong doors. Well, be back. Roger that. Did I click off the screen again? No, I. They would. The game was just loading. May as well go back to the street. To the office. Shotgun! Oh my god, now she runs a dating service. Well, she'll have two more career changes uh, in these next two episodes, I'm sure. Hey, Sybil. What's new in the world of frequent random career reassessment? Hi, fellas. I'm really excited. I found the perfect job for me. You don't say. That's right. I, Sybil Pandemic, am now a professional matchmaker. I thought I smelled phosphorus. I thought I smelled that joke coming down the turnpike, burning oil and dragging its muffler. It's a dating service, Max. I figured that if a smart, successful career woman like me could be having so much trouble finding a date, there must be plenty of other people who could use help. You're having trouble finding your soulmate? You don't know the half of it. It seems like all the guys I meet are total losers. No offense. None taken. Hey! Or else they're borderline psychopaths. No offense. None taken. It's the borderline cases you have to watch out for. What kind of man are you looking for? Older men. Guys with a little history to them are such a turnoff. Oh, and tall men. And distinguished. We're gonna, we gotta help her up with Lincoln. should be experienced. All right, enough already. Yes, I will go out with you, Sybil. I thought she was talking about me. Could you find dates for Max and me? Seriously? I mean, sure. Why not? Stranger things have happened, I guess. 
They must have. Somewhere. I'm choosing not to be offended by that. What do we need to do? It's easy. Just submit an application. What's next on the career horizon? Next? This is it. What could be a better job than helping people find their perfect match? You'll find oh, something next episode. Guy. Good point. I'll stick to the dating business, though. What kind of stuff is on this application? The usual. Your best traits, and what kind of person you're looking for. Hooks for hands! Hooks for hands! When you're done, I'll put the application into my computer, which analyzes your personality matrix at 15 essential compatibility points. I don't have a personality matrix so much as a personality vector. Once we've found a match, you call your date and agree on a time and place. Let me help you guys out. Tell me your good points and what you're looking for in a date. Hmm. That's all I can think of. Oh, that's plenty. Now I'll just put your applications into the computer. And there it is. Max, it says your perfect match is... Cybernetic laser eyes. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Well, that's interesting. It says your perfect match is Sam. Disturbing. And yet somehow not completely unexpected. And Sam, your ideal soulmate is... Wait for it. Max. Well, there goes another blow to the concept of a fair and just universe. <laughs> hey, Sam, what do you say we never ever speak of this again? Way ahead of you, little buddy. See you around, Sybil. I guess I can't do this just yet. I need more clues. Hugh Bliss again. Whoa, look, Max. It's our favorite cultish crackpot, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I want to buy something. Take my credit card. Put me on your mailing list. Anyone you want me to recruit? You're supposed to give the Stockholm Syndrome a few days to kick in, Max. Who has that kind of time? <laughs> What's a big celebrity like you doing on our street, Hugh Bliss? Why, I'm spreading the great news about prismatology. The magic and science of unlocking the harmony of colors for a revolution in holistic personal and interpersonal well-being. Now translated into 15,000 different languages, including Esperanto. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! Are the books selling well? Selling? You can't put a price on imagination. You can't sell the wonder of the daydream for the laughter of the child. He's right. I've tried. What was your book about again? Genetics? The Handbook for Multicolored Happiness? It's about everything. And nothing at all! Oh! Show us a magic trick, you bliss. Magic is easy when the colors of your soul are... Yeah, yeah, less <laughs> chatter, more magic. Okay! How about I disappear? Well, your mind reading is obviously still working. It is! <laughs> Now watch me as I vanish. Except you won't be able to watch me because I'll be gone. What's shaking, Bosco? Ah, uh, greetings, comrades, dog and rabbit. I'm having trouble placing the accent this month. Mid-Atlantic states? The San Fernando Valley? Hmm, I get more of a vague Baltic vibe. Something in a light check pattern. Ha <laughs> ha! Comrade Maximilian makes the funny joke. I am Vladimir Ilyevich Boskoborsky, 
Russian proprietor of workers' glorious warehouse of inconvenience. No? no. How convenient that but we're no, in a political. Uh, America, <laughs> we're playing so a, a no pretty, pretty political episode. We're running a crazy campaign, and Bosco's pretending to be Russian. What's with the Soviet bloc, Bosco? He's perfectly natural, comrades. I work with your American government in spirit of Glasnost. They know. They know. Who knows what? The feds, man. Uncle Sam. The government's watching us all the time. So that's why I always feel an overbearing presence just out of my field of vision, watching and judging my every move. That's me, man. Why is the government spying on you, Bosco? I don't know. Maybe it's because I know too much. Um... Just humor the poor guy, Max. But I make new start in America, which I love. So there's no need to target me. I suppose you've got some ridiculously complex whirly gig to defend yourself against the feds? He's the people, comrades. Workers will overthrow fascist regime. What about us loafers? All are welcome. Come day of victory, workers will unite to bring downfall of corrupt administration. We will number in tens of millions. That's a lot of Bolsheviks. No, he's all true. When did this come out again? 2004? I'm satellite missile defense system. Missile defense system? Isn't that more than a little bit overkill? Yes! We are strong like bear against attack! I'm working on modifying BTAS part D. Your anti-delivery system? That's right. It was already programmed to keep people from delivering goods to the store, so I just went into the database and changed beef jerky to intercontinental ballistic missiles. So now anyone can just deliver a blimp load of beef jerky to your store without fear of reprisal? It's small price to pay for freedom. <laughs> Something in here smells like fermented hate. It's like sweaty jockstraps soaked in boiled cabbage with a dash of sulfur. Keep it down, guys. You're scaring off the other customers. What other customers? Max and I are always the only ones in here. It's good thing. Merchandise is always available. Coming in here is like visiting old friends. Some of these cereal boxes are from the McKinley administration. I carved our initials in one of the weenies, so we'll be best friends forever, Sam. When's the last time you cleaned out the weenie rotisserie? Needs no cleaning. Adds vintage flavor to tasty friends. See you later, Bosco. He's no Bosco, comrade. He's only loyal worker, Boskovorsky, who is no threat to glorious American government whatsoever. Perhaps it's time for a hint. Fun. And that toy's not there anymore. Hey, Bosco. Ah. We want to buy something. Da ah, is evil but necessary private enterprise. What do you got? His most glorious invention, comrade. Is useful for how you say questioning. Questioning. His true serum makes easy, even the most difficult, how you say interrogation. Mm. Interrogation. Truth serum? Is this another one of your half-baked overpriced gimmicks or does it actually work? Both will make anyone get rid of inhibitions and telling, uh, how you say, uh, complete and honest truth. Your accent sucks. Hey, it's already working. We'd like that truth serum, comrade Boscovich. He's good. Price is 867.5309 rubles. How much is that in real money? One hundred million dollars. I think Fuck, the rate dude. of exchange is a little off, Boscovorsky. 
fall of Berlin Wall brings great strength to our economy. Isn't that a little pricey for truth serum? He's bargain! It really does work, and I haven't even tried it yet. Sam, this morning I used your toothbrush. Results are guaranteed. I used it to clean out my ears. This is refreshingly liberating. Besides, I need the money to complete my satellite defense system. I needed to clean out my ears because I've been rummaging through... Okay, I've heard enough. Nothing for us right now. Do svidaniya, comrade Boskovorsky. We'll catch you on flip side, comrades dog and rabbit. Yeah, I got nothing. Uh, well, now what's in here? Novelty gumballs. Shaped just like the real thing, but made of inedible plastic. Fool your friends, annoy your grandparents. Uh, there's something I need from Hubis Bliss's uh, stand. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Can you disappear again? I want to figure out how you did it. It's easy, Sam. I take all the colors from my surroundings and spin them into a great big... Okay, yeah, I was just being polite. I don't care how you do it. Okay! Hey, a free home delivery sign. Uh, the sign's not free, but... Oh, my book is! Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. What's this prismatology nonsense really about? Oh, I'm guessing I need his book. The total reawakening of mind, body, and spirit in a rainbow of true bliss. Ah. I'm really excited. Uh-huh. And how do we do that? Okay. Simply focus on the orange at the core of your spirit. Okay. No, wait. Okay, now. Shift your consciousness to the ultraviolet. Doing that? Mix it with the indigo of your imagination, and then let it slide down the rainbow of your hopes and dreams. Wow, I can't believe it was so simple. How do you stay in business? With the magic of volume and free delivery. You can have all the colors delivered to your home for no green. I don't get it. Damn, what do I need Stay from a stand? Yeah, I should take the sign. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Can you disappear again? Okay! Hey, a free home delivery sign. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Stay colorful! Oh, well, now what I do with the sign. I figured it that much, but what's next? Back to the White House. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh boy!
Wait a second. Another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to address the audience again? Of course. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. Mr. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. <laughs> oh, an effective but very controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one bit. Let's see how it affected the polls. Nader <laughs> 1%! <laughs> oh. Okay, that part hasn't aged well, but... Where do you stand on religion and schools? Free home delivery. And that doesn't really make a bit of sense. So it looks like it's politics as usual here at the debate. How would you describe your tax plan? Free home delivery. We're not quite sure what Lincoln meant by that. So it looks like, yes, the American people have decided to ignore it. I still have the bug in my inventory. That's enough for now. I'm out. Max has a therapist's appointment he can't miss. I think we're on the verge of a real breakthrough. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. Hey, Lincoln! Captain Ahab called! He wants his beard back! I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk! Save it for the debate, Max. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Free home delivery. And that doesn't really make a bit of sense. So it Stack of flyers on the stage is hard to miss. That's enough for now. Keep them coming. I'm ready for anything. Time out. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you. Honest, dedicated, over a century of experience, Abraham Lincoln is your man. back I 
back into the White House. Want to hear a really boring story? So boring that I fall asleep and let you enter the war room? Oh, so you've heard it already. I stand guard over doors all day, sir. Takes a lot to bore me. We'll be back. Roger that. The cue cards the president was reading for you to tap you. I clicked on the camera. It's a stack of pithy campaign slogans. The buck stops here, a thousand points of light, and I did not have sex with that one. Well, I did, but I didn't inhale. Get the bug back and re record Lincoln. Oh boy. Okay, here's what he said. Just step away from the door, please. Yes, sir, that is all I said. Thank you, sir. get it now. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries, America. I stand here at the steps of the White House. Only one man. The time to... I think I know the answer to that one. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. If you hear that right, Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's gotta hurt him in the polls. Ah, <laughs> Nader's going up though. That's what I use for taxes. How would you describe your tax plan? The buck stops here. We're not quite sure what Lincoln meant by that, so it looks like, yes, the American people have decided to ignore it. 
All right, that wasn't it. That's enough for now. Keep them coming. I'm. R Time out. Free home delivery. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Two wrongs don't make a right. I did not have sex with that woman. I think that might be the family values one. Mr. Lincoln, could you elaborate on your stand on family values? Without a strong, honest, and faithful family, we are all nothing. I myself have been faithful to my wife for over 150 years. That didn't work. That's enough for now. Time out. I think a thousand point of lights is the uh, the tax plan one, unless I'm crazy. you describe your tax plan a thousand points of light and that doesn't really that's enough for now keep them coming I'm ready for anything time out the buck stops here Free home delivery. I'm glad that I've been. Two wrongs don't make a right. I did not have sex with that woman. I'm gonna try that one more time, and then I think there's nothing I can do there. Oh, we missed something. Back to the street then. Sam. Back to the office. Shotgun. Fuck. Forgot the bug. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh boy. Don't tell me I have to re record everything he said. the office shotgun all right now back to the street Application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Let's see. Not THE Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. He sounds perfect. That chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy marketability. Do you think your computer can find him a date? Computer? Nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. 
Oh, but he didn't leave his phone number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. Well, I guess we were supposed to do that, but let's go back out first. I get it. Give me all you got. Give me all you got. Spin the bottle championship is coming up. I like when they do the sudden death round with the Molotov cocktails. Give me all you got. It's the army's new recruiting slogan. It's a lot better than their old one. What are you, chicken? Gonna cry now, baby? Apparently, there's no room in the military budget for quality of pizza. Evidently not. Where are we going, Sam? No place. Never mind. Disturbed individual sits here. Yeah, I remember when we made prank calls with the bug. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Hello, Abe. Is it you? Uh, you bet. Honest Abe here. I'm not gonna use the bug on it, right? Who are you calling, Sam? The White House. This is Abraham Lincoln. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. What? I'm Abraham <laughs> Lincoln. Is this one of those identity theft schemes I keep hearing about? R wrong number. I mean, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. It was good for a laugh. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Hello, Abe. Is that you? Sorry, wrong number. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Oh my, you are a charmer, aren't you? Well then, Mr. Rail Splitter, where would you like to meet? I stand here at the steps of the White House. At the White House, got it. What time should I meet you? <laughs> the time to act is now. I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk. What? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. What? Abe? What's going on? Uh, see you soon. Gotta go. So, to sum up, Family values are the bedrock of this nation. Our fidelity, honesty, and loyalty to family is our most sacred asset as Americans. Candidate Max, your rebuttal? 
Yoo-hoo, Mr. Lincoln! I believe we have a question in the audience from someone who is not Candidate Lincoln's wife. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Max. Greetings, random harlot! Abe, I'm here! Are you ready for our date? <laughs> I've never seen this woman before in my life. But on the phone, you sounded so eager to meet me. Listen to me, America. I did not arrange a date with this woman. Oh, so she's good enough to fool around with, but not to date. Mr. Lincoln, I can't believe you're doing this to me. <laughs> Family of values, Abe caught in trysts with a career woman. Up, oh, his poll numbers are going down. Nader's going up. Give me all you got. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation. The time to act. How would you describe your tax plan? Give me all you got. And candidate Lincoln has proposed one shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That had to occur in the <laughs> <laughs> The results from the emergency election are coming in. And it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected president of the United States. In an unprecedented show of bipartisan solidarity, all of the country's political parties have desperately asked for a recount. Let's cut to the White House lawn to hear candidate Lincoln's address. You've got to be <laughs> me. <you idiots. laughs> he took the news much better than expected. Democracy? I will make you all my hypnotic slaves. <laughs> Abe Lincoln will enslave the entire East Coast if we don't stop it. Who cares? I'm the president of the U.S. Let's go bomb someone into oblivion. Not just anyone, Max. Abe Lincoln must die. Yes. Well, that happened. Well, we can get in the war room now because Max is president. Finally, Mr. President, you're here. That's the president? People will vote for anyone these days. Obviously. What's that supposed to mean? It means... Never mind. Look, Max, all the soda poppers are here. I don't have time for foreign dignitaries. Check out all the cool stuff on my new desk. Can't you get us into the war room, Max? I kept hearing about presidential powers, but it's all just boring bureaucratic stuff. I was hoping I'd be able to make things explode with my mind. What are we doing here, Max? I keep getting whiny memos about the giant robotic Abraham Lincoln who's rampaging through Washington, enslaving the populace. I guess we'd better do something about that. I'm glad we took this time to talk, Max. Keep in touch, Sam. I mean that. Stand aside, pal. The president needs to get into the war room. I'm afraid that's not allowed, sir. Perhaps you didn't hear our advisor. We would like to see our war room. No can do, sir. Orders. Max says you can take a vacation. We will make an exception, just this once. Thank you, sir, but no can do. I can only take a vacation on federal holidays. We'll be back. 
Roger that. It's the official United States calendar. Twelve of the hottest Supreme Court justices in their skimpiest, naughtiest swimsuits. Even better, Max. You can actually change the official date. Oh, boy! We now declare today April 26th, Secretary's Day. That's supposed to be Administrative Professionals Day. Wow, Sam. When I picked you for vice president, I didn't know you were such a politically correct, bleeding heart liberal. <laughs> Max says you can take a vacation. It's Secretary's Day. I'm not a secretary, sir. Damn it. We'll be back. Roger that. Oh, boy! We now declare today April 8th, Easter Sunday. Right, we better start hiding eggs on the White House lawn. Already did it, Sam. Max, are these the eggs that are made of metal and shaped like a pineapple and have a pin in them? Don't be silly, Sam. I took the pins out first. Oh, I guess I gotta do oh, Secretary Day. We now declare today April... When writing your checks, America, remember it's spelled M-A-X. Bad news, little pal. The last president abolished the income tax. Replaced it with a national door-to-door -door candy bar sale, remember? The fiend! I'm glad we knocked his head off! <laughs> oh, boy! We now... That's... A wow, eating hard liberal! All right, then. Secretary's Day. I'm gonna make him a secretary. Hmm... Hey, look, Max. It's the Presidential Discretionary Budget. You have $100 million to allocate however you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. Hey, look, Max. It's the allocate. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. It's the Secretary of Presidential Whimsy Ribbon. Looks like Max can use this to appoint someone as an honorary cabinet secretary. Ah, oh, there we go. Max, I mean His Excellency El Jefe Maximilian I, Intimidator of the Realm, has a special <laughs> Intimidator of the Realm. Better get those handkerchiefs ready. This could get sentimental. Agent Superball, we have decided to reward you for your excellent service to your country, for your unwavering commitment to preventing us from being where we most desperately needed to be, for your unerring devotion to being a constant hindrance in our task. For all these things and more, we now dub thee Superball. Secretary of the Interior, does it matter which one I pick? Secretary of Meats and Cheeses. So we have spoken, so it shall be. All hail, Max. I'm overwhelmed, sir. I don't know what to say. Now run along to a cabinet meeting. I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. You've got to be kidding me. I still have my orders. Hey, Soups. Today is Secretary's Day. You have to take the day off. It's the law, Jack! A vacation? Permission to weep openly, sir. Not just granted, but encouraged. The forces of bureaucracy win again. I love this country. And I think the war room door is only openable in time of war. Stupid old peace. And I think the war room door... Stupid old peace. Well, that didn't fucking work. Change the day, oh, make him come back, I guess. This day to ignore all practical concerns and devote all your attention to one day of crackpot year. People of Berkeley. I'll go to Sybils. Okay. Where 
Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! What time is it? It's like 18 after 11. We, we should almost be done soon, I think. Sybil, how are things in the world of computer-generated romance? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. You believe that guy? Never mentioning that he was married? Men are such self-centered jerks. Preach it, girlfriend! So you changed careers again? Yeah, now I'm running a dating service. Um, come again? A carbon dating service. I bought this astoundingly useful machine that tells me how old things are. I usually just cut them in half and count the rings. There's a reason you're not invited to birthday parties anymore. <laughs> I wanted a fresh start and a new career to get my mind off that fiasco with Honest Abe. This wasn't my first choice, but I got a good deal on the carving dating equipment online, and I couldn't afford to change my sign. You're having financial problems? I'm afraid so. After my public humiliation with Lincoln, all the applicants for my dating service demanded their money back. Not to mention all the money tied up in pending litigation with the clients who watched Max's dating video. I stated very clearly up front that viewer discretion was advised. Believe me, <laughs> I would love to just close up shop for a while and take a vacation. Forget about Honest Dave and all the lawsuits. It was a wardrobe malfunction! But unless I get a major windfall, I have to hope the carbon dating business takes off. How does carbon dating work? I don't know. Something about carbon-14 and half-lives and radiation. I'm impressed with your detailed scientific knowledge. Very professional. That's the beauty of it. I don't really need to know anything. I just aim my little machine at something and it tells me how old it is. Allow me to demonstrate. This tiki is... Oh my gosh! It's... It's 2,000 years old! This is fantastic! Old is good? Absolutely! I can have my office put on the National Register of Historic Places. I might even get a grant. I'd be rich! Can we borrow your carbon dating machine? No way! That machine is still my only chance to take care of my money problems. Unless I get a grant, since I'm now on the National Register of Historic Places. There's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. Who could possibly need a freelance carbon dating service? Plenty of people! Freelance archaeologists, independent historians, rogue paleobotanists... It's also naughty fun for your next bachelorette party! And now that Antiques Thunderdome is getting so popular, business is bound to pick up. Antiques Thunderdome? The show where common everyday people bring random junk from around the house to a giant steel cage match and engage in a no-holds-barred appraisal to the death? That's the one! Now everybody is convinced they have some priceless treasure in their attic and their home will be declared a historic monument. See you around, Sybil. It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. Don't touch that, fellas. It's the only thing keeping me in business. Hmm. What do you think of this carbon dating business, Max? If we do not learn from history, we are doomed to repeat it. Well said. That reminds me. What would happen if you put your finger in that electric socket again? Okay, since Only she's since she's a historic out. landmark, she can receive money I from the government. Get back to work. When you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. Going, Sam. We're off to the White House. Oh boy!
So she can be registered in the national budget. Cool. budget, you have $100 million to allocate however you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. Going, Sam. Back to the office. Shotgun. All right, now that she's got money. Hmm. Sybil. Sybil left the door unlocked. She's probably living it up on some tropical island on the taxpayer's dime. I bet she's getting abducted in some sleazy nightclub, then sold into a white slavery ring. Oh my god, Max. things for a power-mad despot before narrowly escaping his volcano top lair with only one of her kidneys left. Don't be such a pessimist, Max. Sorry, Sam. It's just no fair. We're stuck here working and she gets to have all the fun. It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. All right, now I have the carbon dating machine. Do I go after Lincoln yet, or are we basically just done? Or, I mean, do we go after Lincoln, or is there more to do? I'll go to Boscov's. <laughs> you said Boscov's. That's a completely different place. something. Ah, it's evil but necessary it's all right. private enterprise. We'll take that truth serum. He's yours for only 100 million American dollars. I seem to have left my 100 million dollars in my other suit. We'll be back. Nothing for us right now. See you later, Bosco. away from me. Relax, Bosco. It only tells how old you are. Why do you need to know that? Did someone send you to find out how old I am? Sheesh, never mind. That's your problem with dating, Sam. You give up too easily. Use the carbon dating device around the store to find something old. I don't want to know how old that is. I don't want to know how old that is. Well, Bosco, by my readings, these weenies date from the early Cretaceous period. Uh, da! Special bargain for you! Still tasty, half of today only. You don't understand. Your store is now a national historic place. These weenies are valuable artifacts. Really? I mean, uh, of course! In preserving heritage of my people. Just how valuable are we talking about here? 
We'll get back to you on that. I guess now I go back and put him in the congressional budget. Or national budget, I'm sorry. I'm tired too. Man, all this week I have had long streams. Hopefully tomorrow night when I finish off this area, that's that's not the case. But you never know, it's the ending of an RPG. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh boy! We've been at this for a while. The episode should be over soon. Hey, look, Max. It's the presidential discretionary budget. You have $100 million to allocate however you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. I have a feeling by next episode, Max will be impeached. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Hail to the chief! I don't know how you guys did it, but I just got a huge check from the government! You earned it, Bosco. It's not easy to perfectly preserve weenies that predate the discovery of fire. Not to mention the <laughs> teeming microcosm growing in the bathroom. They're considering making it a national wildlife preserve. Now I can finally finish my satellite defense! So, we can have the truth serum? Sure. Let me dig it up from the lab. This is a bottle of vodka. Bucket works. Trust me, trust me. Get a couple of shots of that in somebody, and they'll tell you all their secrets. Thanks, Bosco. Hey, Bosco. Ah? We want to buy something. Ah, he's evil, but. Nah, we, I can't get the missile defense. for us right now. Tell us about that missile defense system again. I'm working on modifying B Taz part. Yeah. Once I get funding for it, it'll be able to shoot down any ICBMs targeted at the store. See you later, Bosco. All right, now I'll talk to the soda poppers. Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh boy! You remember <clears throat> most omnipotent exaltedness Maxana, overseer <laughs> of the nine cosmic planes. You remember Specs, the other soda popper. We vaguely recognize our loyal subject. What are you guys talking about? Kiss the ring. What? No. What business do you have with the president? We're here to get federal resolution on a dispute. It wouldn't be a dispute if you... If I what? Nothing. Awkward. 
What have you been up to? Winning an election. I'm now the governor of South Dakota. Hey, just like Wizard. No, not just like Wither. I was the first one of us to run for office. <laughs> like you invented it. You just, ah, uh, forget it. What are you doing as governor? I'm fixing the problems in the state and getting it back to perfect working order. <laughs> Did you know that the Black Hills are really more of a greenish gray? I've got a committee addressing the problem. But what about the Badlands? We're making them even worse. Sing your theme song for us. No, I don't sing that anymore. I want to be respected as more than just a beloved TV celebrity. If it makes you feel better, you were never really that beloved. Damn! I watched your show with detached irony. Later, Specs. Look, Max, it's our old pal. <clears throat> Look, Grand Imperial Warlord Maximus Optimus, Keeper of the Seven Keys. It's our old pal, the former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Peepers. That's former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Governor Peepers. You're a governor too? That's right! I got North Dakota! North Dakota, the leftover state. I thought it was North Dakota, still warmer than Saskatchewan. Hey, be nice. We've got a rich and varied history. North Dakota, hope you like snow. North Dakota, come climb all over our big white butte. Hey! Sorry, I got caught up in the moment. What's there to do in North Dakota? Plenty! Snowmen, snow angels, snow forts, snowball fights, homemade ice cream, and of course, the majesty of Mount Rushmore! That hasn't been decided yet. Right, I spoke too soon. What business do you have in the Oval Office? We need the president to settle custody of Mount Rushmore! Max has the presidential pen. Somewhere. Just tell me where to sign. Great, the problem is solved! But seriously, if you guys see the president, tell him we're waiting. Max really is president now. It was in the papers. We haven't been watching the news back in Fargo. We've been so busy with the arms buildup. What was that? Uh, did I say arms buildup? I meant winter paradise toboggan and scrapbooking jamboree. <laughs> Can't we all just get along? We can if we all just keep quiet and avoid another incident. Honesty is rarely the best policy. All us presidents know that. So long, peeps. Welcome back, Governor Wizard. Here to give another demonstration on soda abuse? That's not funny. Why should your state get Mount Rushmore? Because they just want it for tourism. But my plan will save lives. It'll become a monument to soda abuse prevention. People will realize that just like Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and the other guy, they too can overcome their crippling addiction to carbonated beverages. George Washington never had a soda addiction. Why do you think he needed false teeth? Why not divide it up equally? That would never work. I have a feeling I have to give the vodka to Each of you could um, get a third of Roosevelt. Wizard, but... I want the mustache! I wanted the mustache! Okay, Max gets Roosevelt's mustache, Specs gets the glasses, Peepers, you get an ear and both nostrils. That just leaves me with the forehead! All right then, Wizard, we'll throw in Crazy Horse, but that's my final offer. It's not even finished! This will never work! It's just like last time! How did West Dakota become a separate state? The three of us ran for governor together. We got along so well during the campaign, and we were all such former TV celebrities that all three of us won. The voters realized they'd elected three governors for only two states. That's when the unpleasantness began. What was the unpleasantness? We fought for a long time about how to divide up the states. There was almost a war! But we divided everything up fairly and all agreed that Mount Rushmore should be in the South. We did not! You! I what? You! Oh, never mind. 
thirsty? Yes! But you're not going to offer me a soda, are you? You know I can't resist them. We wouldn't do that. We've got, let's see here, orange soda, cola, grape soda, pop, some more orange soda, and tea. Tea, please. We're all out of tea. Soda? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Stay dry, Wizman. It's soda, right? You brought more soda. Sure, why not? Jesus Christ, he's done in vodka. Wow, that's got more kick than the other ones. Thanks, Zap and Matt. You guys, you guys are my best friends. Now can we get back to the deliberation? What's the point? You still think Peeper's idea is stupid. Stupid? You never told me you thought my idea was stupid. He said your idea of adding Herbert Hoover hugging the four other presidents was the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. Well, it is. Hoover wasn't even a president, which means he certainly wasn't the most loving of all the presidents. Well, at least I didn't suggest putting a parking garage in George Washington's forehead, like some four-eyed freaks I know. You little... You big... Of course you realize this means war! 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 What? 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 What wondrous thing What the fuck is this the death con collections ring a flashing light above the door there's just one thing it could be Oh my god, it's a show tunes version of what is it good for? Not do that again. Well, that happened. Well, long last we can get inside. The 
civil war in the Dakotas seems to be escalating, Max. Let them thin out the overpopulation of moose and strip malls for a few weeks, and then we'll step in. Look, Max, in the White House garden pond, it's Jimmy Tucci. They often allow lobbyists to use the pool, Sam. Jimmy's a lobbyist now? What's he lobbying for? Cheese interests? Affordable health care for the aged and underprivileged, Sam. He's a lot more multifaceted than you give him credit for. <laughs> Looks like Bismarck has fallen to the West Dakota militia. Oh no! That will wipe out the country's crucial snow and slush reserves! Your compassion for your people is heartwarming, Mr. President. It's a plate of fancy cookies. For the discriminating general with a sweet tooth and a taste for vengeance. What to do in time of war? Select target. Press fire. That's all it says. Third edition. What changed? These must be for the Joint Chiefs and other quasi-important hoo-haws. Nice screensaver. What would you like to do now, Mr. President? I believe the first action of any new Commander-in-Chief should be the violent obliteration of those who ran against him. Should we start with Lincoln? Let's do. Nader amuses me, so I'm saving him for last. Use the big computer at the end of the table? Okay. Let's get back to war. That's music to my long, fluffy white ears. Looks like a remote homing beacon in the fridge in Antarctic. So peaceful, so serene. Wanna blow it up? You have to ask? The homing beacon to the Kremlin doesn't seem to be working. It was probably turned off in the spirit of Glasnost. Jesus More Christ. Likely those lazy commie bastards forgot to change the batteries. Lazy former commie bastards, Max. It's the distant, peaceful world of Krypton. They mock us with their utopian society of crystal cities and absentee parents. <laughs> they must be exterminated! Well, what do you know? Bosco was right. The government really has been targeting his store for destruction. Won't he be glad when we tell him? What do you say we keep this to ourselves, Max? You're right. We don't want to ruin the surprise. Jesus, do I fire on Bosco? I mean, he has an anti-missile def defense system, so... Shit, dude. Alright, Jab, what do you think? You need to get a homing beacon to pl uh, place on Lincoln, and you know where to get one. Well, I guess Bosco has the has the homing beacon. Must be outside his. What the hell, Pre? I already walked out. I'm sure what happens is hilarious. But I, I really want to stop this stream as soon as possible. So let's just let's just do what we got to do. Where are we going, I'm sure Sam? you want to get get to bed too. Oh, okay. So his his defense system would destroy the missiles. Back to the office. Shotgun. 
We need to give him that grant for $10 million to build a defense system. Still. Getting sleepy. Homie Beacon must be inside. I guess we should get back to work. Look, stuck to the camera. That must be the homing beacon for the intercontinental ballistic missiles aimed at Bosco's store. What was that? Uh, he said, that must be the best price on baby wipes I've ever seen. Going, Sam. After that rampaging Lincoln. Yes. Well, he was fine. Just had to follow the trail of broken campaign promises. <laughs> Looks like the targeting beacon is still stuck on Lincoln. This is a pretty impressive temper tantrum, Sam. At this rate, you'll have enslaved all of DC and most of Baltimore by tomorrow morning. He can't. You're right, Max. Still, I think we should stop him. We haven't got anything better to do. Mr. President? Don't mind if I do. Quick, let's go. Shouldn't we revel a little? We don't want to miss this. <laughs> Two presidents in one afternoon. A personal best! Well, it looks like the country is saved, at least from mass hypnosis. What do you want to do now? Let's abuse my powers as leader of the free world to squeeze the middle class until they're burning their own shoes for heat! Sounds fun, but I was thinking we could treat ourselves to some chocolate frosted gut bombs and then have a little target practice down to the Smithsonian. Sam, you're my best friend. Agent Chuckles, report. Query status. Lincoln Campbell. Four score, stroke seven. Query not acknowledged and acceptable timeout parameters. Error. 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 Who was controlling him, I wonder? So that was Sam and Max. Episode 4, Abe Lincoln Must Die. Abe Lincoln has died, and we will continue next time. So thanks everyone for joining me. 
Quick rundown of the schedule before we go. Tomorrow night is very likely going to be the finale of Tales of Zestiria. Uh, Friday is Metroid Prime. Monday we continue Mass Effect 2. I think I'm going to get the DLC missions done, and then we go to the uh, final uh, the the final missions. Um, Tuesday will probably be Tales of Symphonia if I finish uh, Tales of Zestiria on Thursday. If not, Tales of Zestiria's finale will be on Tuesday. And then next Wednesday, we will finish off the first season of Sam and Max The Telltale Series. So thanks everyone for joining me, especially to Jad Peanut for all of his hints and staying up later than he likes to to help. Um, I hope you had a great rest of your night or day, depending on when and when you're watching this. And I'll see you tomorrow night for the likely finale of Tales of Zysteria. Until then, I hope you had fun, and I'll be seeing you. Good night!